This is the Money Loves Women podcast, the podcast that guides women to wealth and an extraordinary life. Here's your host, Dr. Deborah Ekstrom. This is Dr. Deborah Ekstrom for the Money Loves Women podcast. Today, I'd like to welcome Katie Burkhart, and she works with Guidance, and she's going to tell us what Guidance's special mission is and how it's important to women and small businesses. Uh, but before we get going with that, Katie, tell us a little bit about your growing up years and who influenced you. Just uh, quickly, give us some context around who uh, you are and where you came from. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so I actually grew up in the Midwest, Minnesota specifically, and uh, I was I am the youngest of four kids. and. You know, growing up in the 70s in Minnesota, I think you you learn a lot about work and how to work, hard work, but also I think about network. And I think about how the Minnesotans, and I believe still do, connect and support and rally and help one another. And I think that, you know, as a general way of growing up supported not only my family, but myself, when I think of, you know, the saying it takes a village sometimes, whether it's um, growing a career, raising a family, but my parents uh, have been a big influence. Uh, They were both educators and both highly educated. And uh, they, you know, you don't make a ton of money when you are teaching or part of the public school system, but they really managed a nice, healthy relationship with debt and used resources wisely. And by doing so, um, when they had an opportunity or enough money or through a network could invest in property, they did it. And for example, you know, growing up in Minnesota, many people have a lake home or they would go up north to a lake home. And that was the first Uh, additional property outside of our main residence that our parents invested in. And not only did that uh, investment grow in value for them over time, it was one we used every summer to go and just live a wonderful Midwest summer life. And then um, once they had some more resources built up, they brought, they bought land and then ultimately with the goal to uh, build on that land. And so it was, moves like this where we watched it wasn't uh terribly risky but it definitely was a leap to see and when i think back at just the influence overall that my parents had on all of us kids was all around financial freedom and getting yourself to a point where professionally you have choice and you don't feel beholden to a job or stuck in a career. And when I think about financial freedom, you know, if it meant um, putting money aside, if it meant uh, building credit in a methodical way, if it meant thinking of investments over a longer period of time, it was all of those little things that Um, I think really added up for all of us, all four of us, to move from one opportunity to another and build a career over time. So, you know, that's really uh, when I think about the influence and and how I grew up, how it's worked for me. So that's interesting. I grew up in Minnesota as well, so I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, A work ethic, very strong work ethic in the Midwest and yep. very strong networking in terms of depending on one another. Yep. It's very, it's a very important thing. And I think that's still going on depending upon where you live, but uh, certainly in the rural areas. Did you grow up in the rural area? Did you grow up like I did on a farm or where did you grow up? Not on a farm, but a smaller town just north of the Twin Cities called St. Cloud. So not a large town at the time, you know, population 64, uh, you know, thousand people. So not that big. So, so, so a town or a reasonably sized town. So all of this was imparted to you. And then you saw your parents, your parents demonstrated to you how to grow wealth by uh, uh, investing in properties. The first mm-hmm. one was your lake home. 
and then yeah. more properties after that. So, yeah. um, and, and so you learned a lot of lessons and were they intentional in teaching their children these lessons? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Um, I would say intentional in the way in which they shared all things about why they were making decisions, goals. That we, we were really clear that they wanted to move out of the town on property and were communicating and putting out there the intention to do so. And so they were able to get 40 acres with very little money to put down at the time, but it was by way of an introduction to a farmer who was ready to sell 40 beautiful acres and had the means to essentially give them a loan with zero interest. So it was things like that that they would tell us about and share um, just as much as at the dinner table, they would talk about work and dynamics at work and working with people. Yes. Okay. Great. So your parents were great sharers and believed in sharing with their kids. Not everybody talks to their kids about money. In fact, most no. people do not talk about money, do not talk no. about investing, uh, do not necessarily share how they go about, for example, finding a property and having someone finance them. Yeah, finance them absolutely. Percent, uh, which is totally amazing. So great. You had all this uh, great background. What did you study in school? Where'd you study? Um, I studied two places. I started my undergrad at the University of Minnesota in Duluth, so in northern Minnesota, and started originally in, in broadcast and actually stayed in broadcast, but also speech communication, and then ultimately went to work in a TV program at the College of St. Cloud State University. Right. Yeah, so. Yeah, right. And so what did you learn in broadcasting that carried you forward into some of the lessons? <laughs> I did not for not for fear of sounding very trite, hard work for little money. <laughs> <laughs> but but, you know, and, uh, you know, you also learn um, passion may not be uh, the job that gets you rich, right? Uh, I, you'd love to think so, but um, you have to or what you believe is your professional passion at the time, maybe is really more related to skills within. Um, and I always think about that when I think about my career growth, starting off in broadcasting and then later, you know, moving away from that to make more money. The beautiful thing I was able to learn was what became transferable skills and those transferable skills of working with people, problem solving, making decisions, being accountable, and those types of things that could lead me to uh, a different industry, a different profession, but were still necessary in growing my career and impacting business. Yeah, excellent. That's, that's really great observation. And that is applicable to every single thing that you might choose for your career, isn't it? So, it is. You know, one of the things I've noticed, Katie, is that you seem to, in your career choices, you seem to be very purpose driven. Mm -hmm. And is, mm -hmm. was that instilled in you by your parents? I mean, they certainly were very service oriented. Uh, yes, in yes, absolutely. And in that purpose, um, definitely foundation of thinking of others um, mm -hmm. and doing for others and whether that was uh, doing for others as a career in which you get paid to do or volunteering. Um, all of us as adult children today volunteer in various ways. Um, I am mentoring women in business. Uh, you know, I have a sister who works for charities, um, a brother who works for arts, you know, so all of us, and it was very much by how my parents behaved and what they showed us and just their investment in people, whether that was through education or um, counseling in schools and, and things. So I would say that carries over into purpose. But I also you know, am an individual that if I do not feel I'm making an impact, it's really hard to show up and give what it takes to you know day in and day out and yeah. so, so, and it, so many people right that's why businesses decide what their purpose is 
and then yeah. relentlessly, go, relentlessly go after it. Otherwise, who wants to be working? You don't want to be working just to collect a paycheck. So, However, people get stuck doing that. And that I go back to that afford yourself financial freedom. And it is not easy at times, right? Yes, absolutely. Tell us more kind of about your whole philosophy around that. Uh, financial, financial freedom? Yeah, not necessarily that your passion is not necessarily going to Yeah, care. yeah. Um, you know, my philosophy around financial freedom um, uh, specifically, I work side jobs because the job originally starting out in my career um, and what I was getting paid, and it started off in um, serving in senior housing, senior and healthcare, it was good pay, but I also um, wanted a lifestyle where I could say yes and take advantage of opportunities and do things, pay rent, be independent. But then that left me, you know, very little to set aside, right? So I would do extra things on the side to have the set aside money or another way to think about it is other things on the side for discretionary income um, and use that current. But if that's what it took and that was what I wanted, that's what I would do. And then ultimately, you know, you can build up to, um, next opportunities. And I think one of the other things that I think is important, Deborah, is no one ever in any company I worked for ever came to me and said, I think you're fantastic. I want to promote you. Right. It was typically one of two ways. And it was, I heard about a other opportunity within a company or outside of the company I was at and put my hat in the ring, went for it, or within a company saying, we're really missing an opportunity. And I believe I can bring that to the table and present it. Yeah, and so, let yeah. me ask you a question. When you went for it, Katie, did you yeah. feel 100% qualified? <laughs> Does anybody? Maybe <laughs> women, we know women often don't. We really expect to be a 100% match. And you aren't, you can't be necessarily, right? Um, to be a hundred percent match means you're just a perfect fit in a culture of a company you have yet to work for, right? But what I do know is if I didn't know it, I'm resourceful, I will figure it out. And whether it's within the company and the people within the company or with my network externally, um, and not be afraid to, again, make the decision, be accountable. Never, not all decisions work as planned, but when you're accountable, you're going to make the right pivot or respond in a way that can get stuff ultimately going in the right direction. I love that you said that because so many of us, uh, when we are either not looking for opportunity, but should be, or get presented an opportunity, don't step forward. And men, they say, anyway, research says that men, uh, if they're 60% qualified, they will step forward because of what yeah. you said. Yeah. They understand that they're resourceful enough, they can tap mentors, they can find the ways to get the expertise they need. And the truth is, if you're moving up, how would you possibly have all that expertise already? Exactly, exactly. It's not, it's not even realistic to think in those terms. And if you're not learning new things, how do you stay engaged? Uh, uh, I don't. I don't think it's possible to stay engaged if you, you're going to get bored. You're going to get tired. Right. Of Absolutely. Right. 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 You'll yep. find more stimulation outside. Uh, something I want to point out: you found side gigs when you weren't making great money at what you were doing, even though you loved, I think, what you were doing. You were very purpose driven in yeah. working in senior housing. And um, uh, but that being said, you found some side gigs and you used it for maybe for just discretionary things, things maybe to improve your lifestyle to some extent. Yeah. But it's also a great way to create excess cash flow to save and uh, put, put forward for investing. And it's Absolutely. one of the things I like to teach. So um, you make a decision. You, you made that, I think, when you were young, when your parents mm -hmm. were mentoring you. You made a decision for wealth. You wanted financial freedom. Yeah, uh, you took responsibility for your money. And again, I think your parents mentored you a lot and, and modeled that, which is yeah. the strongest mentoring that you can have. And then um, 
uh, after taking responsibility for your money, you start to uh, assess your mindset. And I think you had a Midwestern mindset, which means work hard and you'll yeah. be rewarded and, you know, do help other people and create value. So all of those things can move things forward for you. Uh, so you assess your mindset. And then after that is create a cash machine. And you weren't, you didn't have a great cash machine in your primary job, but you knew how to be resourceful and create more cash flow. And when yeah. you create more cash flow, now you have, um, you know, the freedom to do take some opportunities, including educational opportunities to advance your skills. Yeah. But you also have the opportunity now to start putting money into a wealth account so that you can take advantage of uh, investments, which I teach people, look, this is the ultimate end game is yes. to make your money work for you so you can you don't have to work for your money and you can choose to work or not work. Uh, work has it, it, work is joy in my opinion, and there's lots of wonderful mm -hmm. things about work. It helps you develop yourself, yeah, uh, and it helps you to um, uh, help other people forward yes. as well, and to mentor and model for your family members and yeah. lots of other people around you that you don't even know you're influencing. Absolutely, right? we influence people three people deep. Uh, yeah. So you might be influencing your children, but your children's friends and. Uh, their parents even so in yeah. three, three people deep so good for you for everything you've done with that but especially for your side gigs there uh, creating some excess cash flow yeah yeah suspect we're investing because that's in your DNA yes, absolutely <laughs> and now you're teaching uh, w one of the things you like to do is help people advance their small businesses so that they can do the same absolutely. so that they can create excess cash flow create efficient um, purpose-driven businesses that create excess cash flow so that they can become financially uh, free yeah. and they can choose to work more or make their money work for them or both Yeah, and create wealth for themselves and their families and security. Yeah. So that's, that's really great. So you went from senior housing and you eventually ended up at Guidant and please tell us why Guidant was formed and what it's all about. Yes. So um, Guidant started just over 20 years ago uh, by two co-founders. And although uh, it was built as an alternative form of financing small business, it was built on the foundation of using your retirement assets and directing how those were invested by investing in yourself. And so, uh, you know, it has been around for a long time to legally do so. It's actually been around since 1974 through a, uh, the Employee Retirement Income Security Act that allows for self-directed investments. Um, but what we do is we help people set up legally the structure in which uh, you can take retirement 401k, let's just use as the most common type of retirement account for most people. Um, and you can roll a 401k, your 401k dollars built over time to launch and start and finance your own small business before retirement age and without taking um, taxable distribution or paying penalties. And so it's through um, this structure in which you can do that and we help people set that up. And what's awesome about it is, I mean, we are able to see over 1200 new small businesses launch on an annual basis. Uh, we work with people all over the U.S. And when you think about the profile of our clients, it's it, it's a familiar profile to a lot of people and hopefully an inspiring one where, um, and I'll define it here in a minute, but when you're like, oh, if that person can do that, I can do that too. Um, and so the profile of who we serve is, you know, typically somebody between 40 and 60 years old. Um, they've worked in corporate America for over 10 plus years. So they've had that time to build up some retirement dollars and they are uh, ready to do their own thing. They're ready to be in charge of, we always uh, like to refer to it as be their own boss and or take advantage of something that they see an opportunity and are very passionate about. And so, um, you know, the, the exciting thing is, you know, it doesn't take 
too much. I think people might have a different point of view of what it costs to start a business. Most of our clients roll on average about $270,000 to get a business either acquired or up and running. That's what we typically see. And the nice thing in this structure, it's called ROBS, Rollover for Business Startups, um, is you don't have to qualify, it's your money, and you can access it pretty quickly. It takes on average 30 days to roll from one retirement account to another. And it's- so let, me, let me stop you just for a minute, Katie, because I want to ask you a couple questions. Yes. Who can do this? Who cannot do this by law or requirement or whatever? Not, not by proclivity or skill level or yep. anything like that, but who can and who cannot do this yes. uh, from a legal point of view? Yeah, um, it's really more about the type of money versus the who, the type of money that can be rolled and the type of business. And so it's um, most retirement accounts, but um, Roth 401k is the most common one that doesn't work. And it cannot be retirement dollars with an existing or current employer. It has to be available to roll from one qualified plan into a new plan that we create in your new business. And specific to the industry, it has to be a business that is selling a good or, or providing a service. It cannot be what you might call passive um, investment or a passive business where maybe you're just investing in property, um, but you're not working in it. Um, one of the other criteria is as the owner, um, you do have to work in the business. It doesn't have to be full time, although a lot of people do. Um, a lot of owners do work in their business full time, but you have to work uh, so many hours annually in that business. So those are some of the key criteria that make this work. Um, another one is it, the entity, the business entity needs to be a C-Corp. Um, we often hear about LLCs or S-Corps, but this has to be a C-Corp because that is the structure that allows you to do this legally. Um, and so, you know, it is really a unknown great way. And one of the statistics that we're really focused on is uh, when we survey, we do a survey every year, um, small business survey, only 25% of the businesses are women owned that do the rollover. You know, when you think about small business across America, 42% are women owned, which is still a low number. It's getting better, but it's still low. But for women using the rollover for business startup, it's only 25%. And I own it. Yeah. And I, I, I think first it's awareness, but two, um, you know, do they have the ability? Um, and ability can be defined as to invest the time and hours into a business or um, the amount of money they would want um, in it. So. Yeah, I guess when you start thinking about people, you said this is common in the 40s, in your, when you're in the age 40s, maybe early 50s, a lot of women are still uh, working full-time jobs and are uh, raising families. Yep. So that would be pretty challenging at that age. I'm wondering yep. if maybe as they get older. One of the things you said it was acquiring a business. Are franchises, acquiring franchises, a really common way for people to do this? Because if you've yep. never run a business, but you have business exposure, such as in corporate America, uh, yeah. Sometimes a franchise is your uh, best uh, choice, and I, I guess I'm a little wondering how much how much does guidance actually guide people in their choice of business? Because uh, yeah. many franchises are goods and services, especially services. Uh, franchises are exceptional, and in fact, the rollover for business startup is commonly known as a form of financing and franchising. So that is a uh, arena in which this is much more understood as well as used. Over 60% of the clients we serve are opening and or acquiring a franchise. And so it is a great way to get started in business ownership, getting that blueprint, getting that support, and something we see many people um, begin their entrepreneurial path on for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's a great way to learn to run a business. And then after that, if you want to do other businesses, you know, you've really, you've really honed your skills. Absolutely. So you've got a lot of support. Doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be successful. You have to have lots of um, 
things in place, right? So to, to do a successful franchise, but mostly the blueprint for how to run the business, as you said, it is yeah. already in place. So, uh, and they've got usually training programs. So yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that really cuts a lot of time and, and effort off the learning curve. Whereas if you've never run a business and you're doing a startup, there's a, um, there's a lot of angst and all that. I wonder if uh, our women, do you think women are less likely to take the risk of starting a business with their retirement money? Or do you think they're scared of doing that? And and then the other question I wanted to ask you is, okay, I've taken my retirement money out and I started the business. Now, how do I manage my you know accumulation of my retirement after that? Right, right. Um, to answer the first question, um, you know, in my opinion, I wouldn't say that would be women specific um, to the risk of what happens if I all this money I've built up over time in my 401k or IRA, um, I roll it into a business and the business doesn't succeed. Right. I think that is any small business owners. Understandable fear. Um, it's no different, though. And the one thing I say is it's no different if you borrow money from family and friends, you take out a bank loan and you lose it. It is loss. Loss is loss, right? Yes. Whether it came from um, one bank account or another. And, you know, so I think that is a common fear across all gender. Um, however, I will say it's something you addressed earlier and it is you know, we see most of our clients are between the ages 40, 60. Well, you think between 40 and 50. Um, I still have teenagers at home and I'm in my uh, early 50s and working full time. Right. Not uncommon. Um, and so, you know, it's going to be the when they are freed up. Also, another area and I'm starting to see this change is what is an industry that we liken ourselves to? Right. What is what are industries in which, you know, often a tech startup, very few women you're seeing in the tech startup of this tech business. Again, it's getting better, but very few. However, what we're seeing in the small business and when you think of Main Street small business, it is industries like health care, home health care, personal services, beauty, exercise. And the more of that we have expanding and available, I think more women are going to uh, associate and identify with, ah, that is what I may be more interested and in drawn in or see myself doing and growing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, I think business acquisition is an absolutely fa fabulous way to get into a business. You have cash yeah. flow from day one. You have a pattern, uh, somebody to teach you. Uh, purchasing a business can be a little bit challenging sometimes as a process okay. there's a teaching of how to do it or if you want to you can go through a franchise uh position yeah, yeah. of course you're paying back for some of that but yeah i think it's a great i think it's a great way to move forward now you're a mentor at tech stars for um mm -hmm. tell us about tech stars tell us what tech stars is yeah and then tell us about the mentorship role you have at tech stars yeah um, so Techstars is a global uh, group, but started in Austin, Texas, and has chapters all over. Uh, one is in Seattle, where I am at now. And essentially what Techstars does is each year um, they have several applicants. It is, as in the name, tech startup companies that apply to become a part of the program. And it's a three month long program where the businesses that are accepted, usually it's about 10 to 11 in any um, tech star group, uh, 10 to 11 businesses that um, they get opportunity and exposure to mentors who have started businesses, people who have helped grow businesses, um, investors, similar type industry people and education and seed money for that three those three months the whole time they are in there they're really building out their business model they're validating they're starting to gain some market share and their uh, founders typically are just learning everything they can in the area of expertise they aren't so that is where someone like myself will come in 
uh, where I am familiar with and having worked with many founders in the past, um, how to create revenue models for companies, how, uh, you know, what is going to be your business model? Is it going to be business to business de development? Is it going to be through channel partners? Is it going to be uh, business to consumer and working with how do they need to think about that based on the business they're building? Um, how are they going to think about building out a sales force? What tools are they going to use? Um, and how are they going to set up fees and fee structures? So these are the conversations I get to have with some pretty impressive and amazing founders that are looking at, you know, really starting launching and developing their business. That has to be so much fun. It is. It is. And at the end of three months, uh, they pitch and they, they do a, a pitch at, to an audience of private and um, also, you know, organized investors and hope to get money to take it to the next level. So it's really always exciting to see who comes in, the ideas they have. We are, there is a big mission to see more women founders in this. And we are seeing that it's still slow, but sure, because we need the women to apply, right? Yes. <laughs> so, so that's one of the things, but it's, uh, it is great experience, great exposure um, and fun to see what, where these businesses go. Very good. So great to hear about tech stars and what that's all about. Uh, hopefully we'll stimulate some women to move in that direction. And uh, also great to hear about what guidance is doing to help people it's such a great thing, isn't it, to get some small businesses going. Small business is the engine that runs our economy in the United mm -hmm. States. It's not the big businesses that we think. It's small business everywhere. All of the places that uh, uh, hire small numbers of people or medium numbers of people and drive our economy forward. And Very much. Make it all work. So guidance is uh, guidance is producing uh, uh, small business, helping small business owners uh, get get going yep. great cash flow and uh, accentuating their uh, wealth so that they can still have great retirements but also build businesses so that's that's fabulous if someone wants to uh, reach out and get involved with guidance or, or have an exploratory conversation with guidance yes uh, somebody who's been yearning to start their own business has some ideas wants some guidance from guidance <laughs> and find out if they qualify for this and if they can make that all work. How do they go about reaching guidance? Yeah, um, best way to uh, find out about us and get in touch with us is going to our website, which is guidantfinancial.com. And, you know, one of our missions is to create education and resources. We have a wealth of information and understanding what is ROTS, what makes it legal, what do I have to do? But one of the other things that I think is really great when you go to our website is you hear stories of and from our clients, because again, we need to be able to see ourselves in these to get to know, hey, we can do with this too. And that person looks like me or sounds like me or is motivated just like me. And therefore, I want to learn more and understand more. And um, then there's also you can uh, put your name in, and we can we'll get back to you. You can inquire online there. You can also um, pre-qualify. And qualify is a funny term when you think about uh, rollover for business startup. You don't have to qualify like you have to qualify for a loan. As I said earlier, it's the type of money you're rolling and the type of business. And so that's where we help people. We, excellent. we, yep. Excellent, excellent. So I'm sure this is something that lots of people have never heard of and I'm so pleased that you're involved in this business. And it sounds like you're very passionate about helping people move their businesses forward and uh, must be wonderful to be coached by you and Techstars. So yeah. thank you for that. Uh, thank you for all the service you've had in the world and from one Minnesota to another, you know, uh, my heart greets you, obviously. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. I want to ask you one uh, last question before you go. Yes. If you were to give women uh, a piece of advice, of advice from or counsel from your experience and life, what would you say to move their to move their success and if to move their success forward toward financial freedom, particularly? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm going to say two things. One I talked about, but I want to emphasize it again, and that is um, put yourself out there when there's opportunity. Don't hold back. Don't wait for a 100% match. Um, if you know you have the work ethic and the resourcefulness, go for it and get somebody to help you present yourself in a way, if you are not able to do it yourself, that shows that you can be a great match for an opportunity. So that that's, that's number one. I'd say the other one is um, in any work you do, don't be afraid to just speak up, have an opinion um, and come from a place of not a know-it-all, but more of a contributor and with a desire to make an impact. People will listen. They want to listen um, from, you know, others. But if you're not talking, they won't. They won't hear you. Excellent, Excellent advice. So first thing is lean in. Yes. Uh, grab those opportunities. Point out opportunities that might not be seen. I think yeah. you talked about that earlier. Yeah. And put yourself out there so that you can advance and challenge yourself and create value for the company you're working for. And then the second thing you said was speak up, have thoughtful opinions, make pe make sure people know that you're there and have a brain. Yes. And communicate. Excellent. Yeah. We tend to hold back, don't we? So yeah. great, great counsel all the way around for helping women move their success forward. And obviously, as you advance, you create more wealth, create excess cash flow, can invest and uh, invest in your training and your learning as well. Yeah. So thanks for coming on, Katie. I love what your company does. I love what your life's been about. Thank you for the contribution you're doing to help support women in growing at Techstars and also growing small businesses and having opportunities. So thanks for that. Oh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. My pleasure and thank you for what you're doing too, Deborah. This is Dr. Deborah Ekstrom for the Money Loves Women podcast. To your health, to your wealth, and to your happiness. May blessings rain down upon you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Money Loves Women podcast. Please leave us a rating and review so we know how we can improve. Visit moneylovewomen.com to gain more insight into how to live an extraordinary life.